فعاش القلب إخلاصا وصرت تحوم كالطير تحلق في ثقافاتي وتنهل من روبا الخير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن اهتدى بهداه وبعد we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We thank him upon all conditions. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All his companions, his entire household. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them all. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the best of the month of Ramadan that is about to come. Ameen. My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of various stories in the Quran regarding the previous nations and regarding the prophets. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon them. These stories are mainly to derive lesson from, to be able to understand the challenges that they faced so that if we were to face similar challenges, we would be able to know how to deal with them. We take the cue from revelation. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to this beautiful revelation for indeed, there is no substitute to the revelation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down. One of the stories that is repeated the most in the Quran is that of Musa alayhi salatu was salam. If you were to open the pages of the Quran, you would notice so many stories of Musa alayhi salatu was salam. And in these stories, there are definitely lessons. Today, I'd like to draw a very important lesson from a little bit of what happened during the life of Musa alayhi salatu was salam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of. You and I know that if I have a piece of paper in my hand and you were to ask me, what is in your hand? I would say it is a piece of paper. If I had a bottle of water in my hand and you were to ask me, what is it in your hand? You would say, or I would say, for example, it is a bottle of water. But if you had something that was more valuable, it would not be a bottle or a piece of paper. If you had a sophisticated mobile phone in your hand and I ask you, what is it you have in your hand? You will say, it is my mobile device or it is my phone. What happened? The A changed into a my. Have you noticed that? The reason is it becomes of value to us. The same applies if you were to ask a child, what is in your hand? He would say, it is my toy because he has an attachment to it. So if it was something even more valuable, we would probably say a little bit more about it. If I were to ask you, and you have a sophisticated gadget in your hand, what is it you have in your hand? You would say, this is my gadget, this is what I do with it, this is what it is for, and you would carry on with greater detail because the last thing you would want me to say is, give it to me, I want it. If it was a piece of paper or a bottle of water, you wouldn't mind. But the minute you say my, it is like you are telling me, look, if you're going to ask me for it, it's going to be a difficult one. If I were to be seen in a motor vehicle, and you were to ask me, what car is this, for example? I might just give you the name of the vehicle because you didn't ask me exactly who that car belongs to, for example, or it wasn't in my hand, so to speak. But you know that it's of value. Nobody would say, give it to me. So when Musa alayhi salatu was salam was asked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a simple question. وَمَا تِلْكَ بِيَمِينِكَ يَا مُوسَىٰ What is it in your right hand, O Moses? May peace be upon him. It was easy for him to say it's a stick. Allah knows that it's a stick. But he says, Hiya asaya. It is my stick. Why? I've had it for a long, long time. And I've been using it for so many things. And let me tell you what I've been using it for. Although Allah didn't ask. He says, he is showing his attachment to this particular stick, to this stick that he had for a very long time. He says, do you know what? I lean on it sometimes. I've been leaning on it. And at the same time, I try my best to uh, herd or assist in the herding of the sheep by drawing the leaves and everything else from the trees for these particular sheep using the same stick. And I have several other 
things that I do with the same stick. So it's like showing a powerful attachment to something material. It is something material. In order to achieve success in this world, we have to divorce ourselves from the love of materialism beyond a point. What is that point? That point is the command of Allah. I'm allowed to like my clothes and my house and my this and my family members and my wife and whoever else. But when it comes to the displeasure of Allah, there is a line that is placed there. Allah comes first and everything else comes after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So exactly as Musa alayhi salatu was salam responded, showing his total contact with this particular item of sentimental value to him that would be very difficult for him to part with. Allah says, Al-Qiha ya Musa, throw it down, throw it away, put it down, O Moses, Musa alayhi salatu was salam. Which means the success of this man was connected to the following of Allah's instruction and that instruction was that which you love the most. We want you to put it away. We, for our sake, we have instructed you. We want you to put it away. He didn't try to explain. He didn't try to justify. He already did whatever he wanted to prior to the instruction. When Allah's command comes, every other command becomes worthless and valueless. When Allah instructs you with something, your destruction is in disobeying that instruction of Allah. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained something, your success lies in adopting it ASAP as soon as possible. Musa alayhi salatu was salam immediately, immediately. Allah didn't say he waited for a time and then he threw the stick or he thought for a moment and then threw the stick. Allah says, فَأَلْقَاهَا Immediately he threw it down. Immediately he threw it down. This is the success of a human being. This is the success even of a Muslim. When the instruction of Allah comes, that comes first before everything else. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, now you and I know when we are tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something, a lot of the times we fail because we are human beings. As we fail, we will begin to see punishment of Allah very close to us. It will become closer and closer. But when we adopt the command of Allah, say we repent for the evil that we have been doing in, uh, we have been doing, we will find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as much as we expect him to convert that into gold, perhaps he will test us with an even bigger test. Look at Musa alayhi salam. He put the stick down. One would have thought it would turn into gold. I adopted the instruction of Allah. I gave something for the sake of Allah that was so close to me because I adopted the instruction of Allah in order to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when Allah said, this thing you love so much, I want you to do something for my sake, throw it down. He threw it down. But obviously, like I said, the weakness of ourselves, we would think, mashallah, that's the end of the test. That was only the beginning. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we converted it into, guess what? Guess what? Listen to what Allah says. فَأَلْقَاهَا فَإِذَا هِيَ حَيَّةٌ He put it down and suddenly it was a serpent, a snake that was actually moving. It was a moving snake. This was my stick loved to me. I adopted Allah's instruction. Now look at what's gone on. A lot of us would think I adopted Allah's instruction. I've been fulfilling salah. I've been keeping my fast. I've been being truthful. I've not been harming fellow human beings and so on. And look at me, I'm still struggling. That's not a sign of the love or the anger of Allah. It's a test. It's a test for you because you were born in order to be tested one after the other. The prophets of Allah have been tested the most, more than anyone else. The tests were for the prophets of Allah. So you and I are nobodies when it comes to comparing ourselves to the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't expect not to be tested. The prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had every test you have had and even more. And Musa alayhi salatu wa sallam, just look at what's going on in his life, subhanallah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, thereafter it became a snake. In another place, Allah says, فَلَمَّا رَآهَا تَهْتَزُّ كَأَنَّهَا جَانُّ وَلَّا مُدْبِرًا وَلَمْ يُعَقِّبْ When he saw it, when he saw the snake as though it had life in it, as though it was something alive moving, he immediately turned around and he ran without looking back. That means it was serious. You know, they say if a dog is chasing you, a little puppy, 
You can still look back every now and again to see how far you've gone. But wait until a lion chases you. You will run without looking back because you know the moment I turn back, I'm losing a few seconds. So when Allah says he ran without turning back, trust me, it was something serious. It was something serious. There was fear. There was something coming in his direction, a snake. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. May Allah grant us protection. Remember, this was fear instilled by whom? Something that was very close to him at one stage, his own stick. His stick was close to him all these years that he had it. Suddenly, it turned into a snake, not an ordinary snake, a venomous, poisonous snake that was so scary. It was big. It actually came towards him and he ran. And then Allah is the only one who can convert fear to peace. Allah is the only one who can convert fear to the sense of security and stability and serenity. So Allah says, Ya Musa, aqbil wa la takhaf. In another place, Allah says, Ya Musa, la takhaf. O Musa, do not fear. Turn around, face it. Don't fear. So this is the challenge that we have in our lives. We have so many challenges. We have so many tests. We have things that we need to leave for the sake of Allah. We need to leave falsehood. We need to leave uh, adultery. We need to leave for all form of sin. For example, those who might be having bad habits. We need to quit these for the sake of Allah. And don't expect that when you quit that automatically, everything will become okay. No, you will have another test, perhaps bigger than that one. Because now Allah wants to test you. You have lost one thing. Now you lose another and a third. And then Allah is the only one who can give you contentment in your heart. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says clearly, O oh Musa, turn around, face it. And guess what? We want you to tackle it. We want you to hold it. Imagine someone telling you, hold the snake. Take it hold it again subhanallah so allah is teaching us all a lesson the story is not there for no reason when you have challenges in life stand up and face them you will have to face them there's not going to be another way ista'in billahi wa la ta'jaz ista'in billahi wa la ta'jaz seek the help of allah and do not become helpless do not become a person who loses hope no matter how big the challenge are none of us here have been chased by a humongous python or a snake or a cobra or some form of a snake and we have been running away from it in the, the way that musa alayhi salatu was salam was running away from this serpent our problems have been lesser than that and allah says turn around face it and you know what when he faced it, he actually went to tackle it, the bull by the horn, so to speak. He got hold of it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turned it back into the stick it was. There we are. That still wasn't the end. Imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says thereafter that, Oh Musa, okay, we would think I passed my test. Alhamdulillah. One thing happened. I threw the stick. I pleased Allah. Then I started running away because of what happened. Then Allah told me, turn around. I turned around. It was so difficult. Sometimes you feel like quitting. But Allah says, you need to think, if the law of Allah is going to be flaunted, there is no use quitting. How can a person quit? You need to face it, tackle the bull by the horns by the help of Allah. A time will come when you will see the success because the true story was only beginning. Allah has a bigger picture that needs to come in play. It started off like this. So then Allah says, another sign Allah gave him was the hand. I'm not going to go into that, but... Allah after that says, I want you to go somewhere. I have chosen you and I want you to go somewhere. Where do you want me to go, O oh Allah? I want you to go to the Pharaoh with the message for him to quit his bad ways and habits. Face him, challenge him, tell him, do whatever you have to. According to our instructions, you are definitely not only in our guidance and with revelation, but you are helped by us directly. So go and challenge him, go and face him. He immediately says, Oh Allah, I need the help of my brother. Allah says, I will give you the help. This shows us that in life when we have challenges, there will always be people who come to the assistance of those who are truthful. There will always be people who will assist sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this, remember, you may not see the result immediately. With Musa alayhi salatu was salam, he says, Oh Allah, I fear because there was something that happened in the past. And I fear that this Pharaoh is going to harm me. Allah says, he won't harm you. Nothing can happen. We are with you. He will never be able to harm you. So Musa alayhi salatu was salam with the help of his brother, he went 
and he faced the Pharaoh. Subhanallah. Look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started. You will never be able to face your challenges in life if you are clinging to materialism. If you are clinging to that which is material, you need to cling to the law of Allah. That is when you will achieve success. You need to cling to that which Allah has decided and dictated. That is when you will achieve success. No matter how you look at things, remember it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ultimately who will cause your success or your downfall. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us success. I mean, so my beloved brothers and sisters, when he went to the Pharaoh, he was instructed to speak to him. When he spoke to him, guess what happened? Immediately as the Pharaoh was known to be a tyrant, he was known by everyone on earth at the time or in his surroundings at the time as a person whom you don't mess with. You don't mess with. Why? Because he is the biggest. He used to call himself the God. He used to ask his people, Ya ayyuhal mala'u ma'alimtu lakum min ilahin ghayri. Oh my people, I don't know of a God besides me for all you guys. Basically, that's what he was saying. There's no God for you besides me. I'm the big boss. You are getting money from me. You are getting help from me. You are getting assistance from me. Remember, if you go against me, all that is going to stop and I'm going to punish you. So when one person went against him and faced him, immediately he says, I will punish you. I will destroy you. I will fix you. I will show you. That's what he told Musa alayhi salatu was salam. And he reminded him, he says, you know what, O oh Moses, you at a certain time murdered someone. That's what he says. So the Pharaoh says, you are a criminal. You are one of those who are ungrateful. There was a time when you murdered someone. So Musa alayhi salatu was salam says, فَعَلْتُهَا وَأَنَا مِنَ الضَّالِّينَ I did it at a time when I was not, you know, when I was away or not astray in the sense of prophethood and so on, but when I fell for a weakness. So Musa alayhi salatu was salam had done this, but he admitted, okay, this happened. What about you? You have done 1000 things. You have actually killed thousands upon thousands, one after the other. And you are trying to come and tell me that I made one mistake in my life. Therefore, you are more superior than I am. That is absolutely irrational. So this is Musa alayhi salatu was salam. Allah gave him the help to tell him, do you know what? They will pick on you for a certain thing. But you need to inform them what they have done. And they cannot say that because you have murdered one person amongst our people, we have now enslaved the entire Banu Israel. That is not the reason. And is that a gift that you are trying to tell me that I saved you one day, therefore you are now supposed to be my slave? Not when it comes to what is right and wrong. No matter what a person has done for you in the past, when it comes to right and wrong, you side with what is right, not with what is wrong. No matter what they have done to you in terms of materialistic assistance. Remember, that is a test from Allah. The day that the litmus test comes, you need to pass it. You do not fail it by siding, for example, with an oppressor. When you know that the only connection between you and that oppressor is money. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. Or it may be power. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. That's a powerful lesson we learn from Musa alayhi salatu was salam. So, Immediately, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him to respond by making mention of what he has done one after the other. He was quiet, he had no response, but it softened him. Why did it soften him? Because he then asked, Qala wa ma rabbul alameen. Okay, I want to know who is Rabbul Alameen. Up to now, he didn't want to talk. But when one thing came, another thing came, when he started becoming arrogant and haughty. And so what happened is, he then softened at a certain point and he says, tell me more about Rabbul Alameen. Who is he? Who is Rabbul Alameen? Then Musa alayhi salatu was salam began and he explained and the story continues in such a beautiful way. The lesson of it is many, many years later. Many, many years later, after the Pharaoh did one thing after another, it was seeming at some times that he may have the upper hand. And it was seeming at other times that he was perhaps losing ground. Allah sent 
one punishment after another, after another, plagues of so many sorts, so much of sickness that had come down, one after the other. But the Pharaoh did not learn his lesson until right at the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Musa alayhi salatu was salam, who was not a person who cursed others, but there was a point where he was fed up. When he was fed up, he raised his hands. Do you know what he says? رَبَّنَا طُمِسْ عَلَىٰ أَمْوَالِهِمْ وَاشْدُدْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ فَلَا يُؤْمِنُوا حَتَّىٰ يَرَوُ الْعَذَابَ الْأَلِيمِ Oh Allah, extinguish their wealth because it is the wealth that got to the head that made them do what they have done. Oh Allah, extinguish their wealth. رَبَّنَا طُمِسْ عَلَىٰ أَمْوَالِهِمْ And oh Allah, harden their hearts. I don't want them now. It's over. They've made me suffer enough. Too many years have gone by. Oh Allah, extinguish their wealth, harden their hearts because they are not going to believe until they see severe, severe punishment. Oh Allah, I want you to punish them in this way. This is shocking. Why is it shocking? A prophet of Allah, all of us are taught that the prophets were soft and they were people who, you know, took the bashing and they were people. But there came a point when they also got fed up. There came a point when they also prayed. There came a point when they also said, when they also made a dua. That was the turning point. Allah says, Qad fastaqima. O Musa, your, your dua is answered. We have given it to you, but be patient, be steadfast. It's just a matter of time. Be patient. It is reported that years later, some narrations say 40 years later, when Musa alayhi salatu was was instructed to head towards the sea and the Pharaoh followed thinking that he was the big boss and the people felt that we were now at a point where we have lost totally. And this is the plan of Allah. When you feel that you have now lost completely, that's when the help of Allah comes. Remember, because that's when you either pass your test or you fail. If that helplessness makes you do something wrong, you have always failed. But if that helplessness makes you become steadfast, no matter what, then you will be successful. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says immediately that, do you know what? Take that stick of yours, the same stick that turned into a snake and you were running away from and this happened and that happened and just beat the water, touch it with the water or touch the water with it and see what happens. He touched the water and subhanallah, the highways were made through the sea and amazingly they were saved. And at the same time, it was a day when the Pharaoh and his tyranny was so great. The people felt that this Pharaoh is actually not dead. He's going to come back one day. So one of the reasons for the sea spitting him out was because the people needed to see that this man is motionless, lifeless. A man who owned everything, a man who claimed to be God. Today he has no life. He has absolutely no movement, nothing. It's a lesson for all of us to say no matter what you have, your money won't help you, your children won't help you, your surroundings won't help you. The only thing that will help you, your good deeds and your repentance to Allah. What a powerful lesson. And Allah will test us again and again. And I want to end the same way I started. These tests are for us to learn a lesson from. These stories are for us to learn a lesson from. And indeed, every one of us is going to be tested, squeezed, literally choked until you feel, wow, what is going on? But remember, Allah inna nasr Allah qareeb. Allah promises that indeed, the help of Allah is very near. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all victory. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad.